Sunday is four man's day to König Klasse, the blue ribboned events of the weekend. We are here in Altenburg for the second week for the final race of this speed fortnight, the four man bobsleigh. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the last of our coverage here from snowy Altenburg, Martin Haven. And again, delighted to have Liz Meyer join me for commentary of the four man competition. And if skeletons are tough to get down, and they are, monobobs and two seat sleds are tough to get down, and they definitely are. Lizzie, four man must be like threading the eye of a needle. Definitely. Four mans are big sleds. They're 200 kilos without guys in it, 600 kilos with guys in it. So it is definitely difficult for them. It's a long start here. And as they pop into the sled, the driver's gonna grab those D-rings and that's how they're gonna drive down the track. As they go, they're gonna steer those D-rings, which changes the articulation on that front bit of the runners. And that's how they're gonna steer the bob down the track. Now, corner four, which is where the pilot is right now, is Omega, and it's a difficult corner to make sure to get out clean. He's now in this top part of the labyrinth. You want to be as calm, as quiet as possible, having the pilot's head as low as possible to keep that aerodynamic form. And they're heading into Kreisel here. Kreisel means circle in German, and it's exactly what it is. You're going to see those sleds get high and low, and one have a clean exit into 11 and 12 into this quick 13 and big long 14 into that uphill section. The sleds can go a bit weightless there, so you're gonna try to make sure you're not skidding back on those D-rings as they head for the finish line through those big corners. As they come through this little extra corner, that brakeman's gonna haul on those brakes, which is like a metal comb going into the, into the ice to stop the sleds just at the finish dock. Nice long uphill run and that makes it uh, relatively easy for the sleds to stop and our field features our world cup points leader francesco friedrich on his home track he's from piana about 15 kilometers away from the altenburg track and he is the man always to beat at a bobsleigh track brad hall lies second in the world cup rankings after six of our or five of our eight races today is the sixth ahead of johannes lochner Marcus Trigel having a great season in fourth place for Austria, ahead of Taylor Austin, still in the top five, the Canadian in his first World Cup season. Well, there are a few new names this year. There will be more as we continue towards the World Championships in the next couple of weeks. And four-man will again there be the final two days in Samaritz, a fortnight from now to decide it all. There's Hansi Lochner. There is Francesco Friedrich. Friedrich struggling with an adduct a strain he uh, tore a groin muscle in training between Christmas and New Year and all of his focus will be on keeping himself healthy getting rehabilitated to go to the two-man worlds next weekend Christoph Harfer, Hansi Lochner, Brad Hall, Mikkel Vogt perhaps at home in Switzerland are going to be really tough rivals for him to beat and it won't just be them dialing yourself back in to Sam Moritz after a year away on normal tracks, Lizzie, is always going to be tough. Definitely. But especially going from Altenburg to St. Moritz is quite a different <laughs> feeling, a different drive. They're going to have to completely shift kind of driving styles. It's going from being in the tumble drive to being hung out on the line in bright sunshine on a still day, basically, from, from the chaos of Altenburg to the calm and uh, Zen Buddhist nature of Samaritz. It's got long flowing corners. It's absolutely silent apart from the wind noise and the clatter of the runners on the ice. No growling of the concrete channel echoing under you that you get at all the other bobsleigh tracks. And you whisper through the forest, listening to the track announcer dictating your future as you go down. But like, the Donair's not as good in St. Moritz. So <laughs> there's, there's the Donair's not as good and they don't have Bratwurst like they do here either. So <laughs> mind you, they don't in Winterberg anymore. But it is, it's a, it's a holy different spirit of place it's and of course the track now 125 years old it's hand built every year it varies very slightly uh, it goes in the same direction the left are still the left the right is still the right but it feels different every time you use it 
Well, let's take a look at our entry list today. We have 16 sleds in the field. Mihai Tenter will be first off with Jakobs Kalender and Patrick Baumgartner after him. Brad Hall of Great Britain, the winner here last week. He is off fourth, and that's a really good start draw. Hansi Lochner fifth, Francesco Friedrich seventh. So even if there is a little bit of snow falling there, nice and early in the draw. Christoph Harfer back in ninth. Then Marcus Treichel just behind Mikael Vogt. Mikael Vogt, who led the first heat of two man yesterday and so nearly won it. Race six of the BMW IBS Air four man Bobsey World Cup. The second four man race in a row here in Altenburg in Germany. Mihai Tenter of Romania heads us off. Martin Haven and Liz Meyer watching the action as Mihai starts his 15th four man World Cup race. And I know he had been dealing with injuries over the past couple of seasons, so it's really good to see him back pushing, not sitting in the sled and giving it. Yeah, new boy on the back, George Jordash, in only his second World Cup start. Mihai Pakyan, a former skeleton slider, his third World Cup race. But Cipriano Dorocci, who was on the two-man sled yesterday, he's done every World Cup start with Mihai. Nice looking run that he's putting together so far. He is a very neat, tidy driver. Just clips the little bit of ice sticking out of the wall there as he comes onto the Chrysler. Nice clean exit as well. He's having a smooth looking run so far. Well, these sleds with their 600 kilo weight are harder to get out of shape. They should be a little more placid if you like, but once they get moving, boy, you better be ready for it. Across the line, 55 to one. Julian Pakianu there on the right, the coach, looking after things. And Mihai Tente, a 5.34, compares to a 5.01 start record, and a 53.17 downtime compared to a 55.21. So today's weather, we are going to be a long way away from start records and finish records, I think. This is kind of the biggest mistake that he had, a little bit of drifting in that straightaway and just gets a little unlucky with that ice bump on the wall as he heads into Kreisel. You're gonna see the sleds waving a little bit in there. The pilots use the pressures to drive and to be able to get a clean exit with acceleration on at the end. You really get a nice great over the brow. Great view down into the sled there as well. See how the crew are packed in like sardines, their legs around the man in front. And that's the reason that the brakeman drops in first, then three, then two. He'll be the last to get down. Same here with the Latvians. Jakobs Kalender, third World Cup for this 20-year-old new driver. He did race here last week. Mihai Tenter was in the Junior Worlds. Uh, Jakobs could have been, but he was here in the World Cup, finished in ninth place. And he's got... Arnis Bebris, Laris Kaufmanis, and Marek Zaldans behind him, a relatively new crew apart from Kaufmanis, who've only got a handful of races together. Ran it real deep there, and has the, the pilot didn't quite have his hands on the D-ring, so it was a little bit of a skid as he exited the groove. This week, it's the European Championships as well for these athletes, so he did miss or he did miss Junior Worlds, potentially yep. prepping for this race. Yeah, absolutely. And his third ever World Cup start in four man. Neat, tidy looking exit there. And that helps to keep the speed alive down at the bottom, straight down the chutes. That's not something we've seen from any other sleds this weekend, but he skids out of 14. Just a little bit loose on the back end of his sled. Yeah, 2800 is behind Mihai Tentea from a 10th faster start. So he lost about uh, six tenths of a second on the way down. The rule of thumb is if you're a tenth up at the start, you should be three tenths up at the bottom. But he was three tenths back. But he does not have the run volume here or indeed anywhere else that Mihai Tentea does. And Mihai does not have the run volume of a lot of drivers. Definitely. A little bit squirrely here. Has to haul it off the corner. He gets a bit of a flop and huge skid as he enters corner nine. Just a little bit of a bumper clip as he exits that curve and onto that uphill section from 14 to 15. This board is basically falling. And so the heavier the weight, the faster it accelerates. These sleds are doing over 80 miles an hour in those bottom three corners. It is not hanging around. Patrick Baumgartner of Italy up next. Didn't race here last week either. 
The 28-year-old was biding his time. His World Cup best is a 10th place finish here in December 21's race. And he has got a couple of new boys in the crew. Robert Messia at three. He was in the two-man sled yesterday. This is only his sixth race in a four-man. And he's also the Youth Olympic Games champion from the first Youth Olympic Games that was hosted in Eagles. Yeah, who do we know who was in the medals there as well, Liz? Oh, maybe Benny Meyer as yeah. well. <laughs> and Rudy Rinaldi, I think, yeah. rounded out the top three. He did. Rudy was the bronze medalist. Benny Meyer, Liz's husband, who's currently looking after young Phoenix and keeping him out of the studio. He was the yes. silver medalist behind Patrick Baumgartner. Both now, apart from Baumgartner, retired. 300s back. He's dropped away from Tentea. And again, you can hear why, even if you're not looking, you can hear the taps on the ice wall that are taking speed out of the sled. A little bit of a bump there as he enters into 15. Yeah, that's going to leave him about 1,500s back at the line. 1,900s back, so maybe a little bit of a bigger hit than we thought. 55. 4-0 for Patrick Baumgartner. So 1900s behind Mihai Tentea. All three of these sleds will compete for the honors in the European Championship. Of course, uh, sliders from North or South America or anywhere else. There is only one sled in the field that's not a European contender. That's Canada's <laughs> Taylor Aus uh, Austin. But Just coming out in the straightaway there. The girls were struggling with visibility, but it looks like the guys might have a bit better luck with the Yeah, the, the air is definitely clear, clearer this afternoon. It's a little warmer. It is, it's more foggy than freezing fog, although I have to say the fog is getting a bit denser than it was in the lunch break. So this morning, there was a tight, you couldn't really see it on the cameras, but walking out, you could see, feel a little bit of gritty snow as well. Well, here is last week's winner in his 45th four-man race. My co-commentator yesterday, Greg Cackett, is at the back. Aaron Gulliver, the new boy this season, and Big T, Taylor Lawrence, the Royal Marine Commando, in the sled as well. Two goals this season. Can they become European champions in four-man? Well, 5.16, they are chasing that 5.01 start record set in the World Championships in 2020 by Francesco Friedrich's crew. And they're somewhere away from that today. Brad's been having a really great season this year, having new coaching staff, just kind of refreshing into this quad, and it's really starting to pay off. And it's uh, and the confidence builds, doesn't it? I mean, you arrive with a hell of a bang, with a silver and a gold in your first two races, but when you've got that head of steam, when you go to the line knowing you can win, it happens more often, right? Oh, certainly. You just keep building on that. And, like, this is a really nice run that Brad's this is, put down. I think we need to start painting Brad's sled yellow and black because he does look like a German on the German tracks. 54-5-6. That was a Yarvol there from Graham Richardson. That was a I, good, good run. I've enjoyed watching Graham in the box for them this year. Yeah. Super excited for his team. Thumbs up from Brad, as they should be. It was a good drive. Yeah. Brad is always easy to read at the bottom, and he is absolutely stoked with that. Really nice run through Kreisel here. Not dipping and going as high as some of the other sleds are, but also that fine balance of letting it go. Yep, and look at the exit. Watch the runner tips. That was sweet. Yeah, beauty. Betty's giving that the chef's kiss, isn't he, right now? <laughs> what do you think? Well, perfect. let's see how perfect it was. Here is potentially his second biggest threat. I think between Hansi Lochner, Francesco Friedrich, maybe even Christoph Harfer, we could get a German winner easily today. Hansi won. His first ever two-man European gold medal yesterday as he took the gold. He's been a four-time four-man European champion. He'll have to beat Brad Hall first if he wants to make it a five-time. The Germans are strong. They're strong everywhere. A little bit slower than Brad on the start there. Yeah, Florian Bauer, Eric Bruckert, who was in the winning two-man sled yesterday, and Christian Rust. They respond really well to the challenge. Nice looping height in the first part of corner four, not giving too much away. Looks like a bit 
of time onto Brad Hall. Drifting, come on, come on, baby. Over to the left into the Chrysler. Here we go. Good speed. Oh, big second wave. Just a little bit late as he enters in corner 11 there. 900s back. He's lost nothing since the entry to the Chrysler. He will be quick at the bottom. A tenth back. This could be down Brad into single here. digits again. Brad was perfect. Hansi is 1200s back. Okay. Well, this is. These two weeks are a, a sort of really elongated version of the World Championships, which will be a four-heat race. So for Brad, it's all about keeping that focus, keeping that concentration, heat in, heat out. And consistency is so important in this sport. Just yep. keep having solid runs after run after run. British Bob Sla Yeah, go ahead. Right, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, big height. Big height in that second pressure. Really big looping height. Over the brow here. Just a little bit too much to that slider's right as he enters into 15. Yeah. Christian Rasp on the left there. And Hansi with a big smile on his face as ever as they chat with Eric Brookett. Brad Hall leads from Hansi Lochner and Mihai Tentea. Talks about Taylor Austin, the only non-European in the field. See, in the, in the grandstands at the finish, a little banner saying, missing Hunter Church. I actually want to shout out to Hunter Church, who did commentary last week. And he and his uh, fiance have announced that they are expecting their first child as well in the late summer. So congrats to them. Uh, a season off with injury produces all sorts of things. <laughs> All right, let's see what Taylor Austin can produce. 5.34 is the getaway for the crew. Oh, just on two, way too long there. First time here in Altenburg this season. He's never raced here before. Took a bronze medal in the season opener in Whistler in the four-man. It's a steep learning curve to come here and yeah. have to race after six runs, or now he's got two weeks of Whoa. runs. But... Yeah, big skid oh, sideways. Back. Oh, you lucky ducky. Yeah, hauls it off Ted, and the sled all over the ice. Oh, and again, Bye. hard take on. He was just a little down in the ditch there, and that is a big pressure corner. Cross the line, not the smoothest run. A 55-58 for Taylor Austin. A wild ride is what yeah. Lyndon <laughs> set up at the top, and yeah. I'm sure the boys in the back are feeling that too. Yeah, Lyndon Rush and Justin Cripps there watching the action. Cripps was a silver medalist in the final race in Altenburg last season behind Francesco Friedrich. Just missing the steers here as he's going through Chrysler. You can see the sled isn't parallel, it's dipping and, and rising so much. Lucky guy here on the exit, just hold it off just enough. And really into 14 on two runners. Hey, I'd rather be lucky than good, especially here <laughs> and also in Whistler, his home track, by the way. In now the 17th race since we were here for the four-man world championships in the 2008 Worlds, no German driver or no race has not been won by a German driver until last Sunday. And this man has won more than his fair share. Up until Brad Hall's victory last week, he'd won the last five outings straight here, including two world championships. So Friedrich, injured or not, is always a danger and he's already into an early lead. Tied the start of that team of Hall, even with an injury. He's really an impressive driver and athlete. Had a tap early on, though, and he always says, if you don't have speed by corner four, you're not going to get it back. You win or lose in the first few corners. He's just got a narrow advantage. But look, it's again level. It's not green, it's not red. It's yo-yoing to and fro the whole time. A little bit of a bump there on the left side. And 0.2 of a mile an hour quicker than Brad Hall. Still a hundredth in it. This could literally go down to one hundredth of a second for victory. And he's two hundredths no. behind. <laughs> Leo Leopold, you were on camera there. Get Leopold the trainer. You don't have to be much of a lip reader to lip read that. 
It was uh, a little exhalation then, 54-5-8. Well, listen, this is his home track. Listen to the crowd. You'll see the rainbow hats in the crowd. This man, his sporting hero is Michael Schumacher. And boy, he is the Michael Schumacher, Angel Villeneuve, and Sterling Moss, and Jim Clark, and everything of this sport. Boy, that was tight. Yep back and forth the whole way. I mean, Friedrich had some pretty noticeable mistakes there. there. Yeah. So if he cleans it up, it's going to be a great second heat for Sharp for new Brad world Friedrich. championship haircuts for Francesco <laughs> Frizzi. That was Torsten you heard in the background. Just having a little chuckle there. All right, game on. 200s for gold. Hansi Lochner, 1200s back. Mihai Tentia still fourth as we get to uh, fourth as we get to the second of our Latvian sleds. And this is Emil Tsipoulis, only the fourth World Cup from him. It's like they pluck them off the street and throw them straight into the World Cup. Started in Samaritz in January 22. That was his World Cup debut. 30th World Cup start for Davis Springis. Matis Mignis in his 49th four-man race. And Chris Lindenblatt's the new boy in only his 10th at the back. So although the pilots are new, they've got lots of experience in the push athletes. Oh yeah. 5.12, fastest start of the contest so far. Now, we didn't reckon, didn't reckon on Tsipoulis being a winner here, but could he be? The start obviously is gonna help him, but he's got it. Clean up a little bit here. Yeah, he added to his start early on though. Now out of the Chrysler, he's in the red. But only by a whisker. Bearing in mind, this, this young man is in only his fourth World Cup four-man race. He's put together a pretty nice run here and Whoa. so strong on the start. 54-82. He is going to be trouble in the years to come, isn't he? We've seen Latvian dominance before in this sport as yeah. well. And I think there's a bright future for this guy. Well, Oscar Skibermanis in his very early World Cup career won gold in four man in Samaritz, then won nothing for a couple of seasons. <laughs> While he learned how he'd done that, then yep. he came back and he became a real front runner. Now he's injured and we believe may even make a return before the end of the year, but Tsipoulis, Boy, that's the best Watch we've out. seen him drive. Definitely. Like up on yeah. that on that brow, a little bit of a skid. Well, he had one World Cup in Samaritz at the end of last season. Didn't race in North America, so he's doing, been doing Europa Cup races. So he did race here in December, but it's only his third World Cup race of the season. Now, what about Christoph Harfer? This could be a challenge. Harfer, 20th four-man World Cup start. Mikkel Salzer at two crashed in Innsbruck last year and Whistler this year with Harfer, as did Tobias Schneider at the back. And Kevin Corona joins them, 34th World Cup start for Kevin, and he has got 17 World Cup medals in his previous 28 races. Wow, Corona's strength. Corona's first race was a gold with Max Arndt. This shows the depth and strength of the German program. Absolutely so. Now, where he loses out to the rest of the teams is the start 526. Where he gains is every centimetre of ice after that. Oh, just clips the expansion joint with the back bunk, and that puts him sideways onto the Chrysler. A little bit of a bump there, too, as he enters into 11. Skid there that Friedrich had as well down into... 13. Just a little bit messy for him. Yeah, it's Laura Nolte's first run here, or Kim Kalicki's first or second runs. 54 84. All right. I mean, the, the grouping is very tight, isn't it? He is 200 behind Emil Sapoulis for fourth place. Uh, he is 1600 out of the medals. Oh. Last week, Christoph Harfer took the silver behind Brad Hall. He was the best of the Germans. Coming off into the straightaway, just too much sideways pressure. Puts him into a bit of a skid. You see they're trying to get control with the runners, just dancing with them a little bit. Big skid as he enters into Kreisel. Yeah. And again, this is into that uphill section where you want to be trying to go straight as possible. 
Unfortunately. Gets an unlucky bump as well. <laughs> yeah, straight into the wall is, is not yeah. the ideal straight. Hey ho. All right, so Christoph Harfer in the mix for the medals. What about Mickey Vogt, Mikael Vogt and Sandro Mikkel led off the first heat yesterday and lost by five hundreds. 40th World Cup start, uh, a big pop, 31st World Cup start for him. Silvieri behind him, Alan Canusa and Sandro Mikkel, his regular two-man and four-man brakeman. In and down, 5.27. The Swiss weren't here last week because they were spending a week training on the St. Mertz track, getting ready for Worlds. Yeah, they didn't have many runs. Don't think that they did 35 runs. Think that they did maybe six. The yeah. track was not open for long. Nevertheless, he absolutely drove up a storm yesterday in the two-man. He has got good hands and eyes, 1800s back. This is threatening Tipoulis for fourth place right now. How close does he get to Hansi Lochner? He's closing in. Really nice looking run right now. Look, the gap's coming right down. It was out 1800s, he's down to 15, could be in single digits. It is in single digits. He's ahead of Lochner by 200s. Peter Ramsidel breaks into hysterical laughter, or maybe almost uh, some emotion there. 54, 66. They were super thrilled with the silver medal yesterday. A little disappointed maybe not to take gold, but when Francesco Friedrich is only a tenth behind you at the line, you know it's you gonna be a tough it. battle, yeah. Like you mentioned, when the athletes load into the sled, the guy at the back has to sit down first before the next two athletes can pop those push bars in and they look to get a little bit stuck before he packs in for the ride. Where Coming off of into the straightaway here, just a little bit of wobbles, but gets it nice and early for Kreisel. 200s ahead of Hansi Lochner, the man who beat him to gold by 500s yesterday. After our first 10 sleds, it is Brad Hall by 200s from Friedrich, votes by 200s from Lochner. Okay, here we go. 11th of our sleds. It is the 40th World Cup start for Austria's Marcus Treichel with some crews that you know well, Lizzie, Marcus Sammer, Stepan, Sesha Stepan and Christian Huber, all of whom competed with Benny Meyer over the last couple of seasons. Definitely. When Benny retired, he wanted to make sure his team was heading to a good, good hands, and they certainly are. And that was a good start. Epic start. 5.17. Trichel has never left the block so fast in his entire career. Alan Newsom making his first start since Lake Placid. So they're mixing and matching the crews across the Swiss sleds, and the Austrians are trying to do the same. Cycle guys in and out, keep them healthy for the Worlds. Nice exit, got away without too much of a touch. Six best speed, top five run, ahead of Emil Sapoulis. Can he close on Hansi Lochner? No, the gap's opening up a little too much. Could well be fifth place. He was fifth last week. It was his World Cup best result, sixth of the line by, well, nothing, actually. He is tied with Christoph Harfer. 200s behind Emil Sapoulis. So we've got three clumps of athletes. 200 separate first and second, 200 separate third and fourth, 200s cover fifth, sixth, and sixth. And he was starting to make that gap even smaller just before Kreisel, where he took a bit of a tap, and we're going to see it here on the replay. Come on off of nine into the straightaway with lots of spectators there as well. He just bunks on the right side and it puts him into a little bit of a skid. From there, he was only 1,200s back as he was heading into Kreisel. It's really difficult when you take that tap to then get refocused and drive Kreisel like you need to. So maybe a little bit too much waving as he goes through. Yeah, you're turning into a long triple right-hand corner facing left. So yeah, no, less than ideal when you get that little tap. Well, we talked about swapping teams around. Cedric followed all with a different lineup behind him. Greg Jones, Dominic Hoofschmidt, and Luca Rolli. Rolli was behind Follador yesterday in the two-man. We do think there's a bit of a Swiss shootout going on for the third spot behind the absent Seaman Friedley. 
I was talking to Christian Reich this morning. They believe Friedley should be fit to compete next week, in which case it will be Vogt, Friedley, and one of Cedric Follador or Timo Rona. Rona won the battle yesterday in two man. If Follador wins the battle here in four man, then that gives the Swiss coaches a big headache. <laughs> Or maybe not. Maybe they use yeah, they different can... crews for the different disciplines. Yep. They could... can potentially do that for sure because yeah. it's over two weeks. Could do either. Follador, seventh at the start, tenth place now. He's losing ground. Just a little bit off those lines, which he would probably want to be having right now. He's recovered a little, ninth on the splits. Only the sixth World Cup start for Cedric Follador, former brakeman. So again, relatively new driver, certainly less experienced. There's Rico Peter on the right. Less experienced than Timo Rona behind the D-rings. And a 56-3-0 leaves him in ninth place. So he's ahead of Patrick Baumgartner by a tenth, and behind Mihai Tentea by nine hundredths. So a nice little bit of no man's land there. <laughs> Coming off of three into four here into the big Omega corner, just a bit of a tap. And then into the straightaway as well. You can see he's trying to get those runners under control, a little bit of left and right movement, just to stop the sideways motion that the sled's going through. He got that just a little bit tap there, yeah. didn't he? But it actually handled yeah. it well. Either luck or judgment didn't throw him into a big skid. So Cedric Follador ninth ahead of Patrick Baumgartner. Now then, two crews from just across the border in the Czech Republic. Well, actually, they're from further than just across the border, but the border is only about 10 kilometers away. First up, Dominic Dvorak, David Burash in his second four-man World Cup start. He raced in the Junior Worlds last week with Adam Debesh, who comes up next. And then Jakub Prochaska, who was in the two-man yesterday, and Dominic Zaleski, who also raced here last week. Dvorak was seventh in last week's race. He was sixth here in 2019's December race. 5.29, good strong start from the Czech crew. We had the push bar sticking out there for a little bit longer than they, than they would like. Nice four to five exit. Into the upper labyrinth, this left, right, left, right sequence that heads down to a corner nine named after the great Harold Chudai, who still slides on this track. 4,200s back, only the 12th best speed. Into that quick 11, 12 corner, which is a little bit difficult sometimes for bobsleds with this poor man because they're so long. It was a top eight run early on. He's now slipped away to about 10th place on the splits. At the line around Baumgartner, just ahead of Patrick Baumgartner. So 55 3 8 run for Dominic Dvorak. 49th four man World Cup start for him. 39th, uh, 38th as a driver. He started as a brakeman, as befits a 10 900 meter runner. You can see the guys just hopping in the sled now, and it's the job of the brakeman, the guy on the back, to pop those push bars in as they go down. And it looks like he just kind of missed it. Yep. Or forgot. One or the other. Yeah. He looks up and hits the tabs again. And then, yep. Yeah. And then gets it to go in. Lots of athletes are struggling there with the 14 15 transition, just staying on the corner a bit too long before popping it off. Yeah. Conditions definitely different from how they were yesterday in the two-man and a lot more momentum in the sleds as well. Well, this is Adam Debesh, raced in the Junior Worlds last year. Two seasons of driving, but this is only his fourth World Cup start. Mikhail Debesh behind him, no relation, made his debut last year with Dominic Dvorak. Then Alice Svoboda, last week his first ever bobsleigh race of any kind at all. And Andre Radzil behind has made eight bobsleigh starts in his life. So it is a very young crew, big skid from one to two. And that may well have been the crew just shuffling themselves comfortably into position, but you don't do that here or in Samaritz. Nope. 
Definitely. If you have a 100 kilo guy in the back moving around, it really does affect the way the sleds are going to be moving. Yeah, it's like not lashing down the load on a trailer. It tends to drive itself. Yes, definitely. All right, so for Adam Debesh, this season is all about experience, about learning the tracks at the top level. He's only done two years of driving before this year, so still very inexperienced. Very, and it'll take a couple of years for him to get some confidence. Yeah, just hauled it down there into the short wall. The push bar came out. Yeah, <laughs> 56 43 slide. And that leaves him in 14th place. Well, he finished in 11th place previously on this track. So, Adam Debesh in 14th at the moment. But like you said, he's a relatively inexperienced pilot, so he doesn't have that same rod volume that we've seen many of the other athletes have. So he's going to be around for a while, for sure. Coming out of 14 to 15 here. You can see a little bit of tape flat, but on the one side. Yeah. Just a bit too much height there into 15, which pops that push bar out at through 16 and across the finish line. It may not make much difference, but if he gets pit by a hundredth by somebody, then that yep. might be where that hundredth came from. We talked about the Folador versus Rona race within a race. Here it is. Timo Rona with debutant Fabian Velscher behind him. Then Marian Juma at three. And Matja Herzberger, another first-time World Cup starter at four. There's always those races within a race happening with oh, the yeah. nations, but especially having a home world champs, he's going to want this a lot. Well, and this is a real makeup crew. The man at two, Velsha, has never started a World Cup race. He started with Cedric Folador in uh, Europa Cup. It's only his 10th four man race. And on the back handles, Mattia Herzberger started with Jan Moulinier in Europa Cup. Uh, so this is his first in the World Cup as well. So just to add extra pressure on yeah. top of it all. <laughs> a a four-man crew that's never raced as a crew. 40.29 at the split in 14th place. So right now, Cedric Folador in ninth is a long way clear. And that might make the choices easier for the Swiss coaches. Of course, what makes it really easy, if Seaman Friedley isn't fit, they all go from this yep. weekend. But as of now, you'd say Timo Rona gets the two-man nod, Cedric Folador the four-man. And it's not impossible. That happened a lot. German coach René Spies for several years yep. only raced two-man, particularly in the big events, because that was his speciality. And so it would be a, a pretty reasonable way to split things. What they might do is put Rona in for both and just give him the strongest four brakemen that there are across the, the, uh, the sled, so. And I think Beat Hefty did that too for quite a few years yeah. as well. But it's, in a normal World Cup race week, it's difficult because they don't get six OT runs yeah. if they only choose to do one discipline. Exactly. But world champs? Fair game, they get those six yep. OT runs, no problem. Exactly so. So, we'll have to wait and see what they uh, what they work out and, and what the second heat brings us. Meanwhile, our final sled in this first heat is Mattia Variola of Italy. Crashed in the first run last week, but is back here. New brakeman Riccardo Ragazzi, 29 years old at two, makes his debut. Then Fabio Batti at three, and Jose Obu, who was in the two-man sled with Mattia yesterday, is at four. And of course, these Italians are looking to grow their program as they head towards a, a big home Olympics in a few years. Big skits. Yeah, Mattia got down without too many dramas in yesterday's two-man race. But it wasn't the two-man that tripped him up last year, uh, last week. It was his four-man. So in his ninth World Cup race as a four-man driver after starting his career on the brakes. Handles the Chrysler well. Small tap there, but it's all good. Yep. Now he's ahead of Adam Debesh and Timo Rona right now on the splits. 14th best speed. Is he going to be... 15th or 16th, six, ah, 15th at the line. Couple of hundreds in it, 500s ahead of Adam Debesh. So, 
I think today for him is all about getting down safely, yep. not wrecking any equipment and yep. not injuring himself or the crew. You know, I think we saw that a couple of times in the uh, women's race this morning. Thinner runners being used for control rather than speed. There's nothing damages your your motivation as much as bouncing yourself on your head. You can live with being a couple of Ks down on the straight. Yeah, definitely. You can see his brakeman's really high behind him. Mm. I don't know if they're not in position yet or... Huge skid there into the short wall by the uh, women's loose start. This Manny Mahata. Manny Mahata, not a four-man winner on this track, bizarrely, but our leader after the first heat has been only one race since the World Championships in 2008 in four-man has not been won by a German, and that was last weekend when Brad Hall and the crew claimed gold for the second time in this season and their careers. <laughs> yeah. Can he do it again? Well, it is a tiny margin to have over Francesco Friedrich. Honestly, on this track, two seconds is a tiny margin to have yep. over Francesco Friedrich. <laughs> Never mind two tenths or even two hundredths. Mikel Vogt and Hansi Lochner basically in a dead heat for third, dead heat for fifth with Emil Tsipoulis, Marcus Treichel and Christoph Hafer. Then behind them, Follador on his own ahead of the Dvorak Baumgartner arm wrestling tussle. And at the tail, Variola versus Dobesh. 500s in that one as well. There is always something to battle for. And that will all come up in the second in deciding heat. The last run on this track in Altenburg for the season for the World Cup. And that will be at 16.10 local, 15.10 GMT, which is 10.10 Eastern. We'll see you then. Bye for now. Denn wir möchten natürlich auch Danke sagen an die Unterstützer und Sponsoren hier dieser Veranstaltung. Und aus diesem Grunde sind wir das natürlich schuldig. Also Aufmerksamkeit für die Werbepräsentation.